Alex Shuriket presents my very emotional party audiobook Steam Galleon Roles played by Sonia Ivanov Cindy Ikari Marina Kalina Misato Katsuragi Prima Kageish Ritsuko Akagi Commander Ivanov Gendo Ikari Raya Enama Rei Ayanami Hanka Twinenko Asuka Langley Ali Katzman Aida Kenske Tolia Suzuhara Tozi Suzuhara Roma Kazi Rudzi Kazi First season Seven Episode On Saturday, Comet Ivanov secretly made his way to Venter Grunker through the back door, having agreed with a familiar watchman. Entering his office, Comet Ivanov sat down at his desk, waiting in agonizing expectation. Comet Ivanov already knew about the battle between Sam Trump and the Soyuz AC, but if for this his soul was calm in view of the fact that the case was in the reliable hands of Comet Kalinina, then the safety of the little thing that should have been secretly delivered by the same train to enter Hunker caused considerable unrest. Finally, at about 10 in the evening, a timid knock was heard at the office door. Come in, Comet Ivanov said, pulling a pen out of his mouth. Comet Kazin stepped into the office, clutching his suitcase and said, Good evening, Comet Ivanov. Hello, Comet Kazin. Comet Ivanov nodded, serious as never, and showed two of some keys. Comet Kazin approached Comet Ivanov and, using one of the keys, unhooked the handcuffs and put them in his pocket. Comet Ivanov opened the suitcase with another key. Inside was a bundle of some old papers, covered in clumsy handwriting. Oh, it was worth living just to see this. Comet Ivanov sat fascinated, admiring the contents of the suitcase. What's right? Comet Kazin nodded. The last, never published, unknown manuscript of Karl Marx. A key to the project of communization of mankind. It bound with super silk thread. Yes, this is the key. Comet Ivanov agreed, closing the suitcase. Comet Kazin, you are free. On Saturday afternoon, the battered railway armada finally somehow arrived at the special station of Moscow City. Comet Helena and the colonel hugged and sobbed at parting, promising each other someday to make war again and never quarreled. Such a drastic change in relations was explained by the fact that after the victory over Sam Trump, Comet Kalina, wanting to further annoy the colonel, came to him with the bottle and offered to celebrate the event. But to the great surprise of she, the colonel agreed, and moreover, after a few shots, he showed all the signs of a kindred spirit. In other words, the rest of Friday and even part of Saturday, Comet Kalina and the nameless colonel spent in raising toasts to their victory, singing battle songs and intertraining shooting from all the weapons of the armored train. All this time the children were engaged only in playing poker. It was not good to play for money, so the children played for the Red Army soldiers. And Tole, terribly embarrassed in the presence of Anka, lost all the time, and Alec played inattentively, mentally being next to Comrade Kalina. And accordingly, Anka, who turned out to be a skillful gambler, got almost the entire personnel of the army accompanying her Soyuz AC. So, on the platform, after Comet Kalina finally stopped kissing the colonel and approached Sanya, Tole and Alec, Tole quietly asked, looking at the retreating Anka. Blanc Marina, will you ever see her again? Of course we will, my sweet Romeo. Comet Kalina said kindly and patted Tole on his head. She will be your classmate. But now I'm sorry, she needs to stay to move her Soyuz to the Gunker. And it's time for you and me to go home. 
Yes, Sanya, don't wait for me. I still need to draw back again for Oinkoin, so I'll take another subway. Sanya grunted and said, <laughs> I hope, Aunt Marina, you will only come to Antrima for the cat. Or rice, as soon as you get together, a bottle will immediately form between you from somewhere, like energy in inhalation. Look at him. Comet Karina grimaced skeptically and crossed her arms over her stomach. Smart became. Okay, since I'm just being smart, can you give me your suitcase out, Marina? She hardly kicked the suitcase away from Sunny with her foot and said, Hey, young man. I don't have the right to treat my colleague with flirt? Well, I'm willing to bet what you will treat her not only with flirt, ma'am. Okay, I accept the bet, sir. Comrade Karina readily held out her hand to the bet handshake. Sanya prepared to receive it and said, If I lose the bet, when I will take out the garbage and do the dishes for 10 days in a row. And if you lose, when the dishes and garbage are yours for 10 days. Do you agree, Aunt Marina? I do. She bravely agreed and grabbed Sanya by the hand. Alec, break it. Alec, who to his extreme chagrin had used up the entire film at this point in time, reacted instantly and acted as a witness to the bet. Giggling maliciously, Comet Karina turned away and said Sanya over her shoulder. Remember, you promised, sir. Having taken the subway through several stations, Comet Karina again climbed onto the surface of the globe and soon passed the checkpoint of her native hostel. Rima Gajewicz, with whom Oink Oink had been visiting all this time, unlocked her door, holding an iron in her hands. Hey, Comet Karina said and nodded at the iron. Are you practicing or what? I have to, Comet Gajewicz muttered, gesturing to pass. Well, how was the trip? And where was the fight and where was the victory? Comet Karina smiled, putting the suitcase on the table and going up to the cat, sleeping on a chair. Wink, wink, get up, your mommy has come. The cat reluctantly opened one eye and immediately turned on the other side. What does that mean? Comet Karina was indignant, putting her hands on her belt. It's your own fault, Comet Aikevich explained sarcastically. You left your little pet and drove off to travel. Okay, that means he won't get luck. Comet Karina shrugged. The cat immediately jumped up and with a mew began to rub against the legs of the hostess. She grinned and said, No, that's right. At that moment, Comet Aikevich pulled out a couple of glasses from the sideboard and said, Okay, have a seat. Let's drink a frontline portion and talk. I also have something to say. A frontline portion? Comrade Karina asked in confusion. Maybe we should not? What happened with you? Comrade Akevich was seriously alarmed and grabbed Comrade Karina by the shoulders and began to look into her eyes. Are you shell shocked? No, no. Comrade Karina said and looked away. I just promised with someone. But I won't pour you down it. So, you will not pour me, I'll pour you. Comrade Kalina immediately blossomed like a mayflower and exclaimed. Brilliant dream, you're a real scientist. Well, give me a knife, there was no bun on treating you with flirt. A few minutes later, the ladies were already clinking glasses. Chewing large, the satisfied cat sat nearby and purred happily. Comet Kalina also put a piece into her mouth and said, Well, tell me what happened there. So, on Saturday, I went to an arms exhibition in the suburbs, where the care of land presented a new development, which we wanted to compete with our Soyuzes. It was based on remote control. By radio. By radio? <laughs> exactly. Even you immediately realized what nonsense it was. I said it was stupid and dangerous, but the head of their technical department just laughed at me. What a million! How dare he do this? Hmm, all right, all right, don't pretend to be my best friend just because I poured you a hundred grams. Sorry, mm, so what's next? And next there was a demonstration. 
Yes, their battle machine certainly looked interesting. But as soon as this unmanned fuck took a couple of steps, he seemed to go berserk and began to crush everything what came under its feet and hands, and then collapsed. It's good that Aaron ran very fast and there were no casualties. But what happened to his fool? As it turned out, not far from the test site, a boy was playing with a captured American radio controlled aircraft. The remote control of this toy caused all this mess. But don't worry, the Kiro Factory project was marked with a big, big cross. Wait, what about my heroic deed? Wasn't I supposed to, like in the original series, get inside this robot and stop it risking my life? All claims to the author of the party. Mm, uh, well, okay. Comet Kalina nodded at the glasses. Let's do it again, shall we? Glancing at his watch, Sanya with a rolling pin in his hands was waiting for the return of Comrade Kalina. Finally, at six in the evening, someone rang the doorbell. Rushing into the hallway, Sanya flung open the door, gaining more eye into his lungs and advance. Comrade Kalina stood in front of the threshold with the suitcase and the cage with the cat in her hands. Moreover, she did not even go in to pretend to be sober. Silly Maliku! She stammered and stepped inside, ignoring the rolling pin. I know what you want to say, dear, <laughs> but I want the bet. I didn't pour a single gram to a gagish. Comet Kalina pulled out the bottle from her suitcase and waved it in front of Sanya's nose. He looked she poured. From such a flagrant injustice, Sanya was simply speechless. Comet Kalina winked, let the cat out of the cage and went to her room, saying, I'm going to sleep. Looking at how she left, Sanya maintainly waved his hand. When she retired to the living room and renounced the world while listening to the Mayaka radio station. But some metallic noises that suddenly appeared outside the door of the apartment and penetrated even through the headphones began to interfere with his full relaxation. Finally, unable to stand it, Sanya put his revolver under his shirt and resolutely opened the door of his apartment, wanting to deal with the noise. But in the corridor, he unexpectedly ran into nose to nose with Anka, who was dragging some kind of bag to the next apartment. Anka? Sanya was dumbfounded, frozen on the threshold. Wow, Sashko! She was delighted, releasing the handles of the bag. We really are neighbors! Comrade Ivanov did not lie, and I am settled in here. Can I help you? Sanya suggested timidly, coming up and holding out his hand to the bag. Sashko, I've already finished, thank you. Anka replied and dragged the bag into her apartment. This is the last bag. And doesn't Marina really live with you? Yes, she does. Sanya confirmed and looked into his apartment. With me. But she's already sleeping. Sleeping? Anka was surprised. Why did she go to bed so early? She must have been tired at work. Would you like some tea? Oh no, thank you. I need to put things in order, lay out of things and all. But later, maybe I'll come. Yes, please, uh, I'll be waiting for. Okay. Anka nodded cheerfully and rattled her bag, which seemed to contain scrap metal. The time had already come to 11 o'clock, and the yawning Sanya decided that Anka was not going to take advantage of the invitation. But as soon as he was about to stroke oink oink before going to bed, someone rang at the door. Bravely making sure that there was his revolver under his shirt, Sanya opened the door. Anka appeared in front of the threshold in camouflage pajamas and with folded sleeves sleeping accessories in her hands. She wrinkled her nose and said plaintively, Let me spend the night. Sorry? Sanya was taking aback. Sashko, I'm in a corner somewhere. Yes, please. Sanya said dumbfounded, stepping aside. But what happened? Mm, it's necessary, Sashko. I don't want to spend the night alone in an empty apartment. Why don't tell anyone, please? Okay, 
then settle down in the living room, please. Anka expressed her great gratitude by bowing and darted into the living room. The highly moral Sanya just shrugged and also went to bed. In the morning, a rather vigorous Comet Kalina, heading to the kitchen, suddenly froze in front of the entrance to the living room. Her gaze rushed to the pillow lying on the sofa, on which legs, sticking out from under the blanket, were located in unfamiliar spotted pajamas. Just in case, after reviewing the data relating to yesterday, Comet Kalina concluded that the appearance of this subject here had nothing to do with her deeds. Carefully creeping up to the stranger, she lifted the blanket from the side where, according to all the laws of logic, a head should have been. Mm -hmm. was surprised when she saw the pilot from Ukraine. Is it morning already? Anka muttered, opening her eyes. Well, morning, but what are you doing here? Ah, I just spent the night. Explained Anga, sitting down. At that moment, it turned out that a Kalashnikov assault rifle of the 47th model also spent the night in the bed with her. Why do you need the rifle? Kovetkina was horrified. Sanyu, of course, is a man, but. Um, but. Uh, oh, who is this? Anka looked at the rifle. Who is this, my favorite one? I just can't sleep without it. Ah, what's the point? Comrade Kalina softened. Now it's clear. Well, I'll hold. Anka said, lowering her legs to the floor. No, no, stay for breakfast with us. Please. Wow! Anka hugged the rifle. I can't do it. Finally, Sanya left the world of dreams too. Arriving at the kitchen, he was almost not surprised by the presence of Anka at the breakfast ritual. This process went smoothly. And now a shot rang out on the street, which symbolized that Raya had left the house and was waiting in front of the entrance. Sanya waved to Raya from the window and leaving the apartment, rang the bell at Anka's door. I'm in my way! There was a sound outside the door and soon Anka and Sanya were already riding down the elevator. Hey, Sashko! Anka asked in excitement. And Raya, what is she like? Raya is a brave girl. But she doesn't get along well with her classmates. Really? Why? Uh, you see, there are rumors that doing a conflict with a classmate, Raya threatened to kiss you passionately. Anka simply blossomed in anticipation of the meeting. <gasps> what a brave you all! Finally, the Super Trinity met. Raya, let me introduce. Sanya took the initiative. This is Anka, the third pilot. Anka and this is Raya, about which I told you so much while we were in the elevator. Glad to welcome you! Anka said with joy, examining Raya with burning eyes. Hey! Raya replied without emotion. At school, classmates took Anka rather calmly. Only poor Tola did not know how to relieve the stress of love, constantly blushing and getting confused in the answers to the teacher's questions. In history class, he confused Stalin with Hitler, and in singing class, he nearly sang Yellow Submarine. When a big break came and a gang of school children occupied the birth fate, Alec, sitting at the same table with Sanya, Anka, Raya and Tola, made a proposal. Guys, I have a great idea. Why don't we have a party to celebrate Anka's joining our fight? Maybe Aunt Marina will agree to participate. Sanya smiled and said, <laughs> Aunt Marina will definitely not refuse. I hope Aunt Rima too. And by the way, I don't mind. Why? Anka jumped up. Let's go to my house after school. Let's celebrate everything there. Raya raised her finger and noted. Anka, we usually go to training after school. Yes, it's true. Sanya confirmed. Therefore, if only after training to celebrate. But this is after 7 in the evening. It's too late. Maybe Friday is better. We'll be able to sit longer. True, this is fraud. Since Aunt Marina will definitely overdo it. Like on the armored train with the colonel. Nothing, let's the whole rage! Anka waved her hand. Well, let's go on Friday then! 
So they decided. At the end of class, the service car took the three pilots to the Grunker for training. Anka was very impressed with the course of the training sessions and even made several progressive suggestions for making the rules of the game more complicated. The chains proposed by Anka were written down and sent to the aged from Smolny for consideration. It should also be noted what Comet Kalina, who learned about the upcoming party, got so excited that she never won on Monday. And attempts to invite Comet Kaisen to the party failed completely. And time has gone. Within a week, Tola almost learned to control himself in the presence of Anka and stopped blushing. And Anka did not take her admiring gaze of Raya and tried to start a conversation with her at the first opportunity. And since then, Anka no longer asked to spend the night in Sanya's apartment. As for Raya, she remained reserved, but friendly enough to Anka. So it was Friday. After hot training battles, from which Anka was released an hour early, her colleagues went to Comrade Akagevich's workshop and went to the pilot's home. At the entrance, they met Alec and Tola, and the whole team went to the door of Anka's apartment. The hostess immediately responded to the doorbell and unlocked it, presenting herself in the same formal dress in which she was on the train. Glad to welcome you, Anka said happily. Please, hold to the living room. The guests entered. The entrance hall of Anka's apartment looked quite ordinary. But when they entered the living room, everyone was extremely impressed. The point was not even but the table in the middle of the living room was overflowing with bacon, onions, bread, dumplings and other delicacies from Ukraine. And the fact that all the walls of the room were hung with all kinds of firearms. A camouflage net was used instead of the curtains, and anti-tank grenade launchers stood in each corner, and the shelves and other furniture were filled with cartridges, grenades and even anti-personal mines. Sanya opened his eyes wide, looking around at all this arsenal and said, Now I understand what kind of roar it was what did. Comrade Kalina nodded her head in understanding and praised. And okay, you are prudent. Well then. Tolly whistled and said, <whistles> Cool. Anka blushed in embarrassment and said, Why, what are you talking about? Take a seat at the table, please. Comrade Agavich and Comrade Kalina sat down next to each other and, according to Sanya's prophecy, a bottle of strong alcohol instantly appeared between them. Alec put down the movie camera, got up and proclaimed. So, my dear friends, I propose to start the party, initiated by me in honor of the replenishment of the Red Army by Anka Litvinenko. Hoo-ha! Hoo-ha! Everyone got up and started celebrating. While they were warming up for all sorts of semi-perverted party activities, Sanya, in the course of a conversation about combat work, asked. Oh, Marina, what's your rank? Comrade Kalina threw up her hands and said, Less than six episodes. I'm a lieutenant, a senior lieutenant. Comrade Agavich chuckled and remarked, <laughs> But she could be a major already. Comrade Kalina frowned and demanded, Shiri. Comrade Agavich moved closer to Sanya and explained, Kalina should have been promoted twice already, but she kept doing stupid things. Either she calls the Minister of Defense drunk and calls everyone idiots, or she beats a staff officer in the face. And once she showed boobs, Comrade Kalina flared up. I knew I showed boobs. What are you already quite fun for what? I didn't mean her own boobs, but a photograph of a naked model from an American magazine that Kalina found in the command center and showed everyone. Sanya cautiously asked. But how did such a terrible photo get into the command center? The state security committee concluded that it was planted by spies to destabilize the Soviet regime. Finally, when the company had satisfied its hunger and its mood had reached a high level, Ali got up again and made a proposal. My dear fans, let's play a fun game! Comrade Kalina clapped her hands and joyfully exclaimed. Twist! Komitagevich objected. No, Monopoly! 
Halik uh, looked reproachfully at the other participants in the feast and said, Ladies, what are you talking about? We'll play something more intelligent. Sanya folded his hands on his stomach and, looking at Anka, who was sitting next to Raya, said, If again poker, I'll pass. I've already lost all the soldiers last time. <laughs> what kind of games do you have in mind? I mean something more sublime. Tola jumped up. Strip chess? I will not let it. You are all hopeless. I mean again the questions. Tola was worried. What is this game? Raya fought and said, Hmm, I've never heard of such a thing. Then Anka slammed her fist on the table and said, Halik, tell us the rules at last. The rules are simple as Hebrew. We take a sheet of paper, a pencil and a deck of cards. From the deck we take the ace of clubs, the six of clubs and any other five cards. We shuffle the cards. Everyone takes one card. The one who got the ace says, I how. The one who got the six says, to me. And the one who got the ace asks the one who has the six some question. Any question. And the one who got the six must answer this question bitty. After answering, the one with the ace writes any new question on the sheet of paper. The cards are shuffled again. And the one who now get the ace reads the question to the new six from the paper. Do you understand? Anka was the first to react. Yes, it's a great game. Let's play. Code Cleaner decided. Do not refuse, what's in order? Willy nilly, everyone agreed and the game began. Fortunately, the owner of raising the first question fell to Alec. He immediately turned to Count Karina, who got the card with a six and asked. Count Marina, which party is the most invincible? Count Karina burst out laughing and gave an answer. <laughs> I think the most invincible party is a large wholesale party of bottles of pure alcohol. Hearing this, Komitakevich even drew her head into her shoulders and glancing sideways at the door, she said to Comrade Kalina, You're crazy, right? Comrade Kalina grinned and said cheekily, leaning back in her chair. <laughs> Don't be afraid, I insisted that the palace apartments were not banked. Okay, let's continue playing. Alex said and covered the sheet of paper with his palm, began to write something on it. I help. Announced Raya in the next round. To me, admitted Sanya. Raya took the sheet of paper and read. What is the first thing you do in a latrine? Sanya looked askance at Alec and replied. Of course, first of all, at Elatrin, I thank the Communist Party for giving me an apartment with all the conveniences. A new question was designed and the cards were shuffled again. Like who? Tola said. Tommy! Anka announced and waved her card. Tola was even embarrassed, but took the sheet of paper and read. Mm. How many times did Divisional Commander Shipoev drone? Ha! Anka shouted joyfully and immediately answered. Historical science has absolutely precisely established what divisional commander Chepaev drowned two and a half times. Moreover, the last time only by 28%. The question from Tole was read by Comet Kalina to Comet Arkevich. Well, Rimachan, tell me, is your heart filled with someone? Comrade Arkevich blushed and stared at Tola and asked, What kind of question is this? Answer! Comrade Kalina demanded, soaking Tola on his head. Comrade Arkevich calmed down a little and sighed sad. How could I forget? Of course, my heart is filled with duty to the motherland! Okay. Comrade Kalina grunted and wrote her question. Raya had to read it to Anka. Why do guys steal women's panties? Hearing this, Sanya covered his face with his hand and slid under the table, trying not to notice what Anka and Komodagevich were sitting in skirts. Anka beamed her face and said, Oh, well, how can you not understand this? It's simple, like a Kalashnik of assault rifle. Oh, I protest, said Sanya from under the table. Sashka, don't be afraid, I won't betray you. Heist. 
Still women's panties to learn the differences. Why hang wears near wine? Look, what is the difference? The party could have been much cooler, but when the phone rang in the hallway, Anka ran out of the room and picked up the phone. Then, almost immediately, she called Comrade Kalina. Huh, oh, Marina, who is this for you? Hmm. Comrade Kalina asked displeased, standing up. I think this is our boss. Comrade Kalina straightened up, straightened her clothes, and pretended to be completely sober. Speaking, she barked into the phone. After listening to just a few seconds, she hung up and turned to the company, said, Comrades, we have a combat alert. To be continued.